Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be filming my teen mom story. I know that I did film this video before but I just didn't like how it turned out. I was honest in that video but I feel like I didn't tell you guys my whole story and I wasn't... Yeah, I didn't tell you guys my whole story because I was afraid of being judged by people on the internet because I know the internet can be a very hateful place and I didn't want to be judged. So that's why I didn't tell you my whole story. I was honest with you, but I just didn't go into details because I didn't want to get judged pretty much. I graduated high school in 2010 and at that time I was 18 years old. And I had a boyfriend at the time. I'm not going to mention any names just for his privacy. But at that time, I did get pregnant. And unfortunately, I had a miscarriage. So, yeah, that was really hard. And that was very, very emotional for me. The second time I got pregnant was with a different guy. And I was 19 years old. And telling my parents once again was really hard because they were already so pissed at me for the first time getting pregnant. And I wanted to keep the second baby just like I wanted to keep the first baby. And it was a whole thing. They were just really mad. And it was really, really hard for me to tell them. And it was also even harder for me to tell them I wanted to keep the baby. Currently, I'm 24 years old. And I know that's not considered a teen mom. But in my heart, I still feel like I am a teen mom. And I still feel like I went through a lot of things as teen moms would go through. And 24 is still um, a young mother. I'm single. My baby's father is in jail and he's been in jail throughout my whole pregnancy and he's still in jail currently. And I don't have, I do have my family support, but pretty much I'm a single mom and I do everything by myself with my son. And he's 100% worth it because he's in my world and I love him very, very much. What I'm going to be talking about is my addiction. Um, you guys don't know this, but I am a drug addict. Not currently. Right now I'm sober and I'm almost a year sober. It will be a year in August. I'm not sure the exact date, but let me check. I have an app on my phone that tells me like how many months I've been sober and it might tell me um, what day is the day I got sober on. So... Yeah, it doesn't say the day exactly, but so far I am 11 months sober. So in August I will be a year sober, which is very, very exciting for me. And it's a huge, huge, huge milestone for me. And I'm so happy and I'm very, very, very proud of myself because I never thought in a million years I would make it this far. I didn't even think I would make it past five months, but my son Christian, the moment I found out I was pregnant, he saved me pretty much and I'll get into that later in the video. So I had my two miscarriages and that weighed very heavily on me. I was very very depressed for a really long time. I rebelled. Um, I started hanging around the wrong people. I started smoking weed. I started partying hardcore and drinking a lot. Um, and what happened was I had a friend. Her name was Amanda. She was one of my best friends and she had a cousin. I'm not going to say his real name. We'll just call him Bob. Um, I saw her cousin Bob at the movies one night. We all went to the movies together. It was like a girls' night, and we ran into her cousin Bob at the movies, and I thought, wow, he is really, really cute. And then come to find out that's Amanda's cousin, and I was like, oh my god, I need his number. And my friend Amanda is a very, very good friend. She's a very good person. She's been mature her whole life, and when I told her that I thought her cousin was cute, she was like, no, 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 like, don't go after him, he's a bad guy, he's bad news, like, please, no. And me being the rebel that I am, like, go Carla, I was like, nope, I want his number. So, she wouldn't give it to me, so I pretty much had to go through MySpace, because it was MySpace at the time, it wasn't Facebook, or I had to go through her phone, I don't remember which one, but somehow I got his number, and we started texting. So... We ended up hanging out with him one night partying and um, I became his girlfriend and he was definitely a bad boy. He partied every night, he smoked weed every night and he also did perk 30s and when he would sniff perk 30s in front of me I was like ew like what's that because at the time I didn't even know what a perk 30 was. Um, and a perk 30 is the same as like an oxycotton or oxys whatever. Um, and I did, just at the time I didn't know what that was and I saw him sniffing it and I was like ew like I would never do that that's so gross I would never do hardcore drugs like that like I was pretty much like judging him and I just didn't understand like 
why he was sniffing Perk 30s and I didn't understand like what it did to him or how it made him feel. I was very confused about it, but I was also very curious about it at the same time. Pretty much, we kept hanging out, and then one day he just really peer pressured me into sniffing a Perk 30. So I, for the first time, he crushed it up for me, and I sniffed that Perk 30, and I fell absolutely in love. Um, and, you know, I didn't do it every single day, so at the time, like, it wasn't a full-blown addiction. I just did it, you know, here and there. And then along the way, I met more and more people who would sniff um, Perk 30s, and I would just do it occasionally, like I said. Fast forward, we break up, I meet this girl, I'm not going to mention her name, we'll call her Kara. I meet this girl Kara and we get to know each other. At this time, like, I'm exploring my sexuality. I know that I like boys, but I also think I have an interest in girls, so pretty much I'm bisexual at this time. Um, and we start talking and I really like her and I get to know her. And as we get to know each other, um, I tell her my past with Perk 30s, and she's like, wow, like, you do Perk 30s? Like, I would have never guessed a girl like you. And I'm like, yeah, I know, right? And she did Perk 30s too. But the only difference was is she didn't just sniff them. She actually shot them up. And if you guys don't know what that means, she would take the Perk 30 pill, she would put it in a spoon, put water in it, crush it down, light it up to melt it, and she would inject it with the needle into her arm. And my mind was like, psh, it was like blown away. Like I, ugh, it was just so gross to me at the time. Like I didn't understand it. And I was like, I would never, ever, ever, ever do that. Um, me and her dated for about two years. So she would do it like every day in front of me. And I would just see her shooting up all the time and how it made, how it affected her. And she would just be like nodding out, like high out of her mind. And I didn't get that high off of sniffing perks because I kind of got used to it. So I was like, fuck it. One day I just wanted to know like what was this, what, like what was so great about shooting up perks. Like I was just so curious to know. So one day I gave in and I finally shot up a perk 30 and she did it for me because I had no idea like what the hell I was doing. So yeah, she set it up for me. She got it ready and she shot me up and I was like terrified because I'm like petrified of needles. Um, so yeah, she shot me up and it was the absolute best feeling in the world. I instantly fell in love with it. Um, it was a hell relationship and a very, very toxic, bad, bad relationship because after that point, I just became so addicted to perk 30s and I just always, always, always wanted to do them and I always wanted to shoot them up. And I kind of was questioning myself and my character because I went to I went from never wanting to sniff a perk to fucking shooting up perk 30s so I was like what the hell is going on with me one day I was with my cousins who I'm close to and I told them what I was doing and they were in shock they were really sad and they told my aunt and then my aunt eventually told my parents and then my parents um, checked my arms and they caught me, you know, because I had like bruises and everything and they were very very disappointed And they never wanted me to see this girl again So they took away my car keys They did anything and everything in their power to keep me away from this girl Which I would have done the same thing if my daughter was doing that, you know But I hated them for it at the time, but that's understandable so We broke up two years later um, Because our relationship just wasn't working out because my parents were trying to keep me away from her so when we broke up, I was like, shit, like, I don't know where to get Perk 30s, like, without her, they're so expensive, like, I don't know what to do. So I was messaging people on Facebook, like, do you know where to get Perk 30s, do you know how much they are, like, where can I get them? And this one girl from high school is like, hey, like, fuck Perk 30s, why don't you try heroin? It's the same thing, but better, it gets you even more higher and it's cheaper. And at the time, I was like, hell no, like, heroin, like, that's a fucking, like, that's a hardcore drug. Like, I would never, like, do heroin or touch heroin. That's gross. Sorry, my camera stopped recording. But anyways, I was like, I would never touch heroin. Like, that's disgusting. I would never do that. She's like, no, 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 just try it. Trust me. So we, we met up one day, and I sniffed heroin with her, and we sniffed heroin together, like, every single day. And once again... I fell in love, but heroin is more stronger than the Perk 30, so at this point, like, I had a full-blown addiction, meaning that 
I had to do heroin every single day or I would be sick physically like I would get really really sick and when you're dope sick it's like having the flu times a million like you can't even sleep it off it's so so bad I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy like Ugh, I hate being sick and that's the reason why some addicts it's so hard for them to get clean is because being sick is just fucking so scary and so painful and they just don't want to go through with the they just don't want to go through the withdrawal symptoms so that's why they choose to keep using because they don't have the resources to help deal with the withdrawal um, I dated my ex-boyfriend again and bad decision by the way but I was very immature obviously it wasn't in the right mindset um, I was still dealing with the loss of my two babies from my miscarriages I just had like a lot of um, depression at that time so I used drugs to cover up that depression and help deal with it um, and he actually shot up heroin so I was like fuck it I want to try shooting it up too so he shot me up and at that time it was complete hell I I should have never done it. I regret it to this very day. Um, drugs make you do horrible, horrible things. Things that I regret to this day. Like I said, I've stolen from my family. I've lied. I've damaged so many relationships with friends, with family, with everybody. It just fucks up your whole life. Drugs are the devil. But Back then, I didn't know. I was so immature, so stupid. Just a girl from high school who had, who suffered two miscarriages. I was just trying so badly to like bury that pain and not deal with it. I just didn't want to deal with life. Honestly, I just wanted to die. Like I was so depressed, and it was. I can't even explain it. It's just messed up. Um, it's really hard for me to talk about this because I am almost a year sober and. When I go back to those past memories, it just brings me back and I don't like being in that place. It's a very, very, very dark and scary place that I never want to go back to again. I was shooting up heroin for about three years, so from 2012 till 2015, but it, yeah, 2012, yeah, for three years. But it wasn't like consistent. I did have sober time in between, but only like five months sober in between. I never exceeded exceeded more than that. And then this past summer, I was really, really bad actually. Um, I, I didn't have a care in the world. Like I just did not give a shit about anything or anyone. I just wanted to get high. Like I didn't care about my family, didn't care about my friends, didn't care about any relationship in my life. All I cared about was that drug and chasing that drug and doing anything I could in my power to get high. Like that was my goal in the morning is how the hell am I going to get drugs? Like how am I going to survive today? Because at that point, that's how I survived. That's how I felt normal was to do heroin and that's so fucked up to say right now because who wants to live like that, you know? Um, so yeah, like I was stealing from my parents last summer. I wasn't listening to them. They were trying to take my car keys away, trying to, you know, keep me in the house and I just didn't want to listen. I would find ways to sneak out. I would have my drug dealer like come to my house to drop me off drugs. Um, yeah. So then I found out I was pregnant in at the end of July and I had a feeling I was pregnant. I was actually at my dad's store and I felt really nauseous and I was like, oh my god, am I pregnant? And during this time, like, I was sober and I got doctor's help because I was kind of forced into it. It wasn't my personal decision to get clean. So I was forced into getting clean, which is so weird how everything happens because, like I said, I went to my dad's store. We were walking around talking to people and I just felt really nauseous and I started throwing up. And I just knew I was pregnant. Like, deep down, I just knew. Like, I had that gut feeling. So the next day, I went to my aunt's house, and I was telling her about it. And she bought me a pregnancy test. I took it, and it said positive, you're pregnant. And in that very moment, when I looked at that pregnancy test, I was so happy. I was also so scared. Um, I was nervous. Happy, scared, nervous. Just so many emotions, like, going through me because I didn't know what to do. I knew I wanted to keep him, obviously. I was just scared telling my parents once again because it was so scary in the past telling them because they weren't supportive. And in that moment, for the first time in my life, I was going to do what I wanted to do and I was going to think about myself and my happiness first over everybody else's. I wasn't going to listen to anyone but me because when I saw that pregnancy test, I was just so happy. So 
I told my aunt and she smiled and she knew I was pregnant. She had the same gut feeling as me and she knew I was going to keep it and we were just happy. And actually the next week we were going to Disney World so it was kind of a good thing that I got to like get away and I had time to think about everything as in like thinking of ways to tell my mom and tell my dad and I had time away from them because there was like a lot of drama at the house because of my drug use and everything like that. So yeah, um, from that point on I stayed sober. I absolutely loved being pregnant. It was the happiest moment like of my life. Like I just loved being pregnant so much. I had so, such a deep connection with my son and I still do to this day obviously but being pregnant is just so amazing and I'm so blessed that um, I could actually carry this child and I didn't have a miscarriage. God forbid, but you know, I was very, very happy and I was also very, very careful and everything like that. Um, and yeah, pretty much my son Christian, he definitely, definitely saved my life because it, if it wasn't for my son, I would still be using and I know that for a fact because when I was using over the summer, I had no desire to stop. And yeah, he saved me. He's my little miracle. He's my gift from God and... um I don't know what I would do without him. He's the reason I'm sober. Um, I would do anything for him. I would give my life up for him. I want to be the best mother I can be for him. I want to support him the best way that I can financially. Like, I want to give him the world. Like, I owe everything to my son. Because if it wasn't for my son, I wouldn't be here today. <sighs> it's just so weird how in life, I'm trying really hard not to cry because I hate crying on camera or like in front of people. But it's just so weird how things in life happen. Everything happens for a reason. And I feel like everything just fell into place. And it's just so weird to look back on. It's just like everything just like fell into place. Like I didn't want to get sober and clean. I found out I was pregnant. I was so happy. I kept the baby, I had an amazing pregnancy, an amazing labor and delivery, I didn't have a miscarriage, and he just saved my life, and I don't know what else to say, I love him so much, I would do anything for him, I would die for him, I, I love him, I owe him, like, everything, everything. It's, it was really hard filming this video because I know I'm going to be judged, I know it, for a fact. I know people are going to call me a whore, a slut, drug addict, call me whatever you want to call me, I really don't care. Um, what I've been through in the past has mold molded me into the woman that I am today. I'm a very strong woman. I've been through so much bullshit and fucked up things in my life that no one would ever imagine. No one. Like, I couldn't even tell you half of the horrible, horrific things I've been through in my life from using drugs. Um, I suffered mentally, physically. My health is really bad right now. I'm actually have to get treated for something coming up in August hopefully I'm okay um but yeah currently like I live home with my family they're very supportive they're very happy that I'm almost a year clean and I'm so proud of myself that I'm almost a year clean I never thought in a million years I would make it this far and yeah I feel like addiction here on YouTube is not talked about at all because I think people are so afraid of being drug uh, I'm sorry I feel like people are so afraid of being judged so they I don't know if, you know, YouTubers are addicts or drug users or alcoholics, but I feel like um, heroin is a huge, huge, huge epidemic right now. Like, whenever I go on Facebook, at least two of my friends pass away every single day. It's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing because they are cutting the heroin fat with... They are cutting the heroin with fentanyl now, which kills you instantly. So, thank God I got out when I did. But I want to say rest in peace to anyone watching this. If you have lost a family member or a brother and sister or a friend from drug addiction, my condolences go out to you. Sorry, my camera cut off. But um, my condolences go out to you if you have lost a family member from drug addiction or a friend from drug addiction. It's a huge epidemic right now. So many people are dying and it's very, very scary. Um... And yeah, I feel like it's not talked about at all here on YouTube, like, at all. And I think it's because some people may be embarrassed or, like I said, people are afraid of being judged. But honestly, I don't care. Um, that was God's plan for my life. I had to go through that for a reason. And I think the reason is 
because of my son because I am such a strong woman now and I am the woman and the mother that I need to be for Christian so do I regret doing drugs in a way I do because it was horrific and I've hurt so many people but in a way I don't because I feel like if I didn't go through all that bullshit and drug addiction in my past I wouldn't be the person that I am today and I also wouldn't be where I am today so yeah that was a really hard video to film. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please don't leave any hateful comments down below. If you do, they will be deleted. I can't really do anything to stop them. I know there's going to be hate. And it was really hard filming this video. So, yeah. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And in the comments below, if you struggle with addiction or if you have a family member who struggles with addiction or if you lost a friend or a family member, let's talk about it in the comments below. Um, it's a very hard thing to go through and it's really sad and I feel like it needs to be talked about more here on YouTube. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my story. That's liter literally like my whole life story, very shortened. Um, I hope you guys know me better and more personally. I'm more of like a personal letter on more of a personal level. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I make daily vlogs with me and my son every single day. Um, people seem to really enjoy those videos. So, yeah. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. And subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching.